Well, good afternoon. My name is Sheila Lamb, and I'm with the Virginia SBDC Network. For those of you that are not familiar with our organization, the Virginia Small Business Development Center is a partnership program between the U.S. Small Business Administration, George Mason University, and local host institutions throughout Virginia. With 27 locations across the Commonwealth, we provide training and technical assistance to small businesses in their local communities. Our one-on-one -on -one advising services are available at no charge. Today's boot camp, Managing Your WordPress Website, is an educational offering presented by the Virginia SBDC Network. We are recording today's presentation and it will be posted on our website, virginiasbdc.org. Due to the large number of participants, everyone's microphone is muted, but if you have questions during the presentation, you can type those into the Q&A box. We have also enabled the live transcript function, which you can show or hide via your own meeting controls. And now it's my pleasure to introduce our presenter for today's session, Cameron Nelson. Cameron is the Chief Digital Advisor for the Virginia SBDC and Charlottesville SBDC. Cameron has over 18 years of experience in, in technology and as a senior tech consultant in Silicon Valley, helping Fortune 500 companies improve their digital marketing and e-commerce. At the same time, he also founded several tech companies, including a software as a service website for tree preservation and a blockchain platform for nonprofits. Cameron is accomplished in language, culture, has an MBA and an MA. He believes new technology products have the ability to help shape our world for the better. Please join me in welcoming our presenter for today, Cameron Nelson. Thanks for the introduction and hello everybody. Good afternoon and welcome to How to Manage Your WordPress website. Um, I've given this presentation over a dozen times so far over the last few years, and it's always really well attended. And I think it's because we all realize that as business owners or entrepreneurs, our digital presence on our website is critical to our success. So this presentation is really speaking to the strategy of building a website uh, in WordPress for business owners. Uh, it's keeping it at a pretty high level, though if you have more detailed or technical questions, feel free to ask them. I'll do my best to answer all the questions at the end of the presentation today, and I'm also available for a one-on-one -on -one meeting with anybody, and my contact information will be provided to you. So if you'd like to meet with me one-on-one -on -one to talk about your own business, feel free to do that as well. So with that, let's jump right into it. We have three goals for the presentation today. The first goal is to discover what WordPress is and learn if you should be using it for your business and your needs. Second. I'm going to show you how to set up your WordPress website and start by finding your WordPress theme. Third, I'm going to show you how to customize your WordPress website, how to set up your pages and get it ready to launch and start generating revenue for your business online. So first, I want to start with what is WordPress and should you be using it? Now, WordPress is not the only option out there, and in some cases, certain businesses might benefit more from a different website platform, and that's completely fine. And I'll talk about some of the options here. So as we know, websites are even more important than ever before. WordPress started over 10 years ago as a way for people to create blogs back when that was really popular, but it's evolved a lot since then, and it's now the number one used website building platform in the world. Everybody from single person companies to Fortune 500 companies can use WordPress and benefit from it. Um, you know, it will take some learning and there is a bit of a learning curve, which is probably the biggest pain point people run into when using it for the first time. If you've ever built a website before, though, you'll pick up WordPress pretty quickly. And if you're a first time user, I anticipate spending about um, four to eight hours of kind of learning about the platform. Uh, should get you up to speed and you'll be able to build the website there, no problem. So there's a lot of benefits to using WordPress. First off, WordPress is widely supported. It's constantly being updated. It just has a 6.1 update that rolled out recently. And that means that it's compatible with any device someone's using to browse your website, whether it's a desktop, computer, a tablet, a smartphone, a smart watch, you name it. WordPress is constantly updating to make sure the website you build there is being displayed properly and is supported. Secondly, WordPress allows you to create logins for multiple users who can come in and work on your website with you to help you build it or maintain it. 
Third, you can choose any web host on the planet practically. WordPress is not locked down to a certain hosting platform at a certain company. Some of the more popular hosting companies include Google and GoDaddy, but there's many, many more. And so it gives you flexibility to choose the host that makes the most sense for you. Some hosts are cheaper. Some hosts have certain features that you might need. Some hosts might be more reliable or have better security. So you can choose your own host. Next, WordPress plugins add great functionality and enhancements to the base platform. Uh, the plugins are written by third-party developers, not the WordPress team, but other developers. And they can do any number of things like adding an e-commerce shopping cart to your website or adding a video player or um, a testimonials section. So lots of different plugins can add different features. And sometimes they're free and sometimes you buy them for a small amount of money. WordPress is built for search engine optimization in mind. So SEO is one of the great ways of digital marketing to get free website visitors and therefore can really help you increase your profits from your online sales. Uh, WordPress has the latest changes in the SEO algorithms that Google and Microsoft and all those other search engines use. So they're constantly updating how their website platform works to be in compliance with these SEO changes. So you can be assured that you have you know, basic SEO built in right from the scratch. You can always customize that and tweak it more later. WordPress also has many great themes that are made from third-party developers from all around the world. The themes are a starting point for your website. And they often help you get about 80% of the way to building a new website and you just purchase the theme or sometimes find it for free, customize it for, with your own pictures and texts. And this is a great benefit of using WordPress. It has thousands of themes from many different industries that are kind of custom built for your needs. And finally, most web hosts like Google and GoDaddy, they offer just a one-click install of WordPress. So you don't need to be a developer to set it up. It's so widely used nowadays that you can usually just click a button on your dashboard and install WordPress and get started using it. So a lot of people ask, well, if I have a website, uh, how much time do I need to spend on a monthly basis kind of updating it for security or other things? So I say about two to five hours per month is what you should plan on spending. You might be solving little bugs, um, finding or solving performance issues. And of course, you'll want to update content like prices on your products or pictures or text. So some people don't have that amount of time to spend on a website, in which case there are some other platforms for building websites that take a little bit less maintenance than WordPress. Those are Squarespace and Wix particularly, and they're good places if you need a simple website. There's a lot of uh, trade-offs there. They're not as robust. They don't have as many features, but for some businesses, those platforms will work. So if you feel like WordPress might be too much to take on, too overwhelming by the end of this presentation, consider the alternatives of Squarespace and Wix. Like I mentioned, WordPress, I think, is really great because it's updated several times a year, both for security and for compliance. Um, here is an update that happened this year with Google. They changed their the way Google ranks web pages and how they show those search results and making sure your web page is compliant. Um, and so they introduced Core Web Vitals. And so Core Web Vitals are just some additional pieces of data they gather on the websites on the internet. And they're going to then give you a higher ranking to have your website show up higher in search results. WordPress is compliant with this as they are with the other changes being made. So you can be assured that your website is you know, secure with the latest um, changes on the internet and also has the good search engine optimization and up-to-date search engine optimization. I get asked quite a bit, what's the difference between WordPress.org and WordPress.com? Because it's it's a bit of a confusing marketing angle they took here, and I do want to clear it up. And there's some pretty big differences. So WordPress.org is what we're mainly talking about here today and what most of you want to focus on. WordPress.org offers full theme support. So all the themes, like I mentioned, there's thousands of them. You could pick your own theme. Um, buy it or get it for free and use that theme. WordPress.com just gives you a few themes that they've kind of hand-selected or made, so they don't give you full theme support. WordPress.org allows you to use all the plugins that are available in the plugin kind of marketplace, whereas WordPress.com does not allow for any plugins. WordPress.org, you pay the hosting fee, which is typically around 8 or $9 a month. 
whereas WordPress.com hosts you for free up to about three gigabytes of storage, which is probably sufficient for most websites. WordPress.com gives you full e-commerce freedom. This, this is particularly important if you're going to sell your products on your website. You can do that with WordPress.com. Like I said, even Fortune 500 companies use WordPress.com, or sorry, WordPress.org because of its full e-commerce freedom. Over on WordPress.com, you actually have to spend a plan, get a plan that costs $45 a month for the e-commerce flexibility. WordPress.org gives you complete branding freedom. You can make your website look and act any way you want. But on WordPress.com, they're going to brand it as built on WordPress.com unless you pay extra to remove that. WordPress.org gives you all the control of your SEO ability to fine tune it. Whereas with WordPress.com, you just have limited SEO control. WordPress.org gives you full access to analytics. You can install anything you want to track your uh, success and behavior of people on your website, such as Google Analytics or Facebook Pixel. But on WordPress.com, they just give you very limited analytical control. And finally, WordPress.org, you do the maintenance, which means you know updating plugins if they're available. Whereas on WordPress.com, they do the maintenance and they do that for you. So a lot of limitations with WordPress.com. For most of you here, that's not the way to go. So don't get confused. You want to just WordPress.org um, is the platform that's going to be best for you. So now that we've decided WordPress.org is the way to go, the next step is going to be choosing your theme. And the theme is the starting template. Um, for many different industries, they're already pre-made. So if you have a nail salon or a bakery or, a, say, a used car lot, um, you can search one of these sites for a theme that fits that kind of industry. And I'm sure you'll find dozens, if not hundreds, of themes that are pre-made for that kind of uh, industry. So it really saves you a lot of time. There's three main places I like to go to find WordPress themes, though there's also others out there. WordPress.org slash themes has a selection of kind of minimalistic and simple themes. They can work for some businesses. They're all completely free. The next one is Theme Forest, which has a very large selection of beautiful WordPress themes from developers all over the world. Some of these are free, but mostly most of them are paid. You'll buy them for around $40 to $80, one-time fee, and then you can build your website using that theme. And nextly, Colorlib is another great website to go to where they offer free and paid themes for WordPress. And you don't need to worry about writing these links down because this presentation will be emailed to you. So you can just click on the links in the presentation when you get it. So once you've decided on a theme that you really like, you're going to log into this, which is your WordPress dashboard. Anybody who's ever seen a WordPress website on the back end before is going to be very familiar with this interface. It has not changed much in many years. It's not too hard to understand and to use, but if you or looking at this for the first time, it can be kind of overwhelming to know where to go to do certain things. So I'm going to walk you through the most important pages now so you understand what they're used for. So over on the left here, this is your default kind of toolbar. Depending on the theme you have installed, you might have other options in addition to these basic ones. But I'm going to go through the main um, options right now. So the first one is the media page, and then appearance, then plugins users, and settings. These are the core pages you're going to need to make sure you click into and properly set up before your website will be ready to be viewed. And next, I'm going to go through a little bit more of a deep dive into what you do in these different pages. So the media management page is pretty simple. This is where you go to upload new images, delete old images you're not using anymore. You can even crop images here. So it's a way to basically manage your media and your images. Pretty straightforward. I'll be showing a live demo of all these pages next after this short presentation is over. So I'll actually be going through these live to show you more about them. The next section is the page management. You'll be spending a lot of time here in page management because this is where you go to create a new page or delete a page that you might not need anymore, but mostly to edit the content of different pages. Here we have um, the home page and a contact page and a blog page. So these are different pages on the website. And from this section, you'll be able to edit the content, edit the pictures and the text on each page. The next section is the theme management, which is under appearance. And this is where you go to upload the theme that you maybe bought 
on themeforest.net. You'll upload that here and you'll click activate and that will actually activate it for you. So this is where you select your theme. You can also see sometimes there's an update for a theme, in which case there'll be an orange button that says update is available for the theme. And you'll see those types of updates right here in the theme management page. So like I mentioned, the plugins for WordPress are one of the coolest things about using WordPress. And you can install plugins and search for plugins right here through the plugins section. Um, it's always a good idea to update plugins if you see there's an update available. I get asked this quite a bit from people who already have a WordPress website. And the reason why I say always update is because generally speaking, updating it is just going to make sure it's the most compliant with um, security changes that have happened on the internet or interactions with other, um, other software on the internet, maybe, you know, different uh, banking APIs or something else has changed and you need to update to make sure you're going to be working seamlessly. Rarely does an update ever make anything break, but the risk is if you don't update for months or years, eventually things will stop working on your website just because they're too out of date and now something's broken. So I always recommend on about a month a month basis to click on the plugin section of your WordPress website and see what needs to be updated here. The next section is user management. This is a very simple and powerful way to add access for different people. So you as a business owner and the website creator should always be the administrator. You can create other accounts for say, a graphic artist who's doing some work, or maybe you have somebody writing blog posts. You wanna create their own accounts, which is free, and they get their own logins. So when the time comes to, uh, if you don't need their help anymore, you can simply delete their login and completely lock them out for making changes. So this is a good security measure and a best practice to follow to create logins for different people as opposed to giving out your own. And the last section that's really important are the general settings. This is gonna be um, some just basic kind of foundational settings of your website. These will not change depending on your theme. So they're like the most foundational. Um, you can change your site title, right? That's kind of like the title that displays up at the top in the browser. Um, you can set your time zone and your date format. Pretty basic settings. You just want to make sure that these are set up properly and that they're ready to go. And then you can click Save Changes at the bottom. So now I'm going to jump over to a live demo, and I'm actually going to show you how these things work on a real website. So this website is one that I helped a uh, Afghan restaurant in Central Virginia build recently. It's a pretty simple WordPress website. Um, they have some pictures, some text. Their menu actually is hosted on grubhub.com. So they're not um, doing a checkout e-commerce thing on their website. They're doing that with Grubhub. And they have a little video at the bottom. So this is an example of a simple simple website that many of you might be trying to build. I'm logged in as the administrator, and that's why I have these options here up at the top. Normal users or viewers of the website won't see any of this. So to go into the WordPress dashboard, I'm just going to click on dashboard, and we've jumped right into it. So you'll recognize this from the screenshots. We have the same items over here on the left, and right now I'm just going to go through them and show you what they are. So the first one, posts, you can probably ignore this unless you're focused on blog posts because this comes from WordPress, WordPress's roots of being a blogging platform and managing your blog posts. Most of you, if you're a business owner, won't really be doing that. So you don't need to worry about that. But let's go into media and we'll see here that this is where the images for the website are hosted. Um, you can click on an image to delete it, but mostly what you'll do is you'll click on the button for add new and you'll just simply drag and drop your images, which are going to be either JPEG or PNG formats here. And they will be added to the media library. Once they're in the media library section below, you'll be able to replace a default image from a template with the image you actually want. So this is where they go first. You'll notice that there's some text here. It says the maximum upload file size is 32 megabytes. Uh, that's pretty common and pretty standard. For WordPress websites, if you do have an image that's over 32 megabytes, that's definitely much too big to display on a website anyway. So you'll want to compress that image. Um, you can do that by searching Google for online image compression tool, and they will let you upload a large image and compress it down to something smaller. A general rule of thumb for building websites is 
uh, aim for a target file size of an image between 100 and 200 kilobytes or KB. Um, that's going to be good for just for general purpose images. If you want an image that's a really high quality, maybe it's going to be a full screen image that spans the entire screen, then you might consider about a 500 kilobyte. But anything over 500 kilobytes is really too big and unnecessary, and it'll make your web page load very slow on poor internet connections. So keep the file size in mind. Next is the pages. These are the pages that came with the template that this business is using. You'll notice that one is called the home page and, uh, and WordPress kind of labels it as the front page. So all the pages are optional. You can delete any of these other pages, but you can't delete the home page. If you delete the home page, your website will just not show up. There'll just be an error message. So whatever you do, don't delete the home page. Um, but yeah, so what you can do from here is you can edit. Uh, mainly, mainly you'll edit your pages here. Depending on the theme that you've selected, you might have different options for edit. I have edit, I have quick edit, and sometimes you might have a, a third option over to the right. Um, if you And it might say something like edit with Elementor, which is a common editing interface. So no matter what edit options you have, um, it's going to work pretty much the same way. You can click on the edit button, and this jumps me to what's called a WYSIWYG editor, or what you see is what you get. And it's a term that just means now that you're an administrator here, you can change anything you see just by clicking on it. So if I want to put some periods here behind Charlottesville, VA, I just did that by typing it in. And if I click update in the upper right hand corner, those changes are immediately live. So it's very simple. Um, you can edit images in the same way. You can click on an image and then you can click on a button here that to replace the image and uh, with one from your media library. You can also, of course, delete images or delete blocks of text if you need to. And to some extent, you can add additional elements in. So if you wanted two more pictures here, instead of you wanted four, not two, you can add additional pictures in as well. Though I will say, overall, it's easier to remove elements from a WordPress website than to add them, because sometimes when you add elements in, it can kind of get funny looking. Um, so you might start with a theme that has all the elements you want and more than you want, and then you can just delete those that you don't need anymore to kind of simplify the web pages and make them what you want. So I'm going to not save the changes to this website because it is a live business website, but any changes you want to make, uh, if you want to save them, you will click save before you exit the edit screen. So again, you can feel free to delete the other pages if you're not actively using them, but also you can leave pages here in this list and they're not going to be visible unless you link to them in your menu. So many, many pages or websites are going to have pages here that aren't really in use and it's fine. It doesn't matter if you have um, ones just floating around here, you might want to use them later. So it doesn't really hurt just to keep them here. The next section we're going to go to is appearance and then themes. And this is where you can see what themes are installed. So all this means is that when you create a WordPress website, uh, you're going to have a few of these by here by default, the ones that WordPress.org thinks you should look at. <laughs> but you know you can install your own. So this one is called Canape, and you see the name here it says Active Canape. This is the one that the business found on Theme Forest. They installed it here, and then we have it here. So when you install your pick a theme and install it, you will then have a button to activate it and you'll click activate and then you will be editing that new theme. So that's the basic process. And that's mainly what you do here under appearance and themes is to select your theme. Next, we're gonna go to plugins. So you can see here that all of these plugins are the ones installed on the website. And there's about five or six of them. Uh, we have a few updates, which are the yellow banners and it would be a good idea to get these updated. Um, and to add new plugins, we can click simply click the button Add New at the top. And this is kind of like a plugin store. It's similar to your app store on your phone where other developers have written plugins that you can install on your website. They can do so many different things and it can be kind of overwhelming. Um, but I'll give you an example of a common plugin people would install would be something like e-commerce, which will add a shopping cart to your website and allow you to take credit cards. So if I search for e-commerce, I come up with 1,036 different plugins for that. And yeah, that's a lot of plugins and you only need one. So you might be wondering which one to pick. Um, 
depending on what you're looking for, if you have a recommendation from a friend or another business owner that says, hey, I use this plugin and I like it, then I would go with a recommendation. I think getting a recommendation from someone who's used a plugin is the best way to go. But if you don't have any recommendation, then I would look for the plugin that has the highest um, number of reviews and the most stars. So that's going to be a general rule of thumb. That's going to be a better plugin than other ones. Um, and in this case, WooCommerce, I know for a fact, is the best e-commerce plugin on WordPress. Um, it's very good and most widely used and all that. So when you're looking for plugins, keep in mind, you know, getting a re recommendation is the best, but otherwise you can look for the highest reviewed ones. And also a good strategy for selecting plugins is to identify a business requirement that your website needs to meet. So let's say user testimonials are really important for the success of your business, but you don't have a testimonial section on your website yet. We'll go ahead and search uh, for a plugin that'll add some a cool layout for testimonials and browse the plugins and select one. So you wanna only install plugins that are gonna be solving a business problem or increasing the value of your website. Don't install plugins just for the heck of it because they sound cool, because plugins all run their own code on your website. Having too many plugins can slow down load times of your of your web pages. Um, so you, you don't want more than you need, essentially. Uh, most of the plugins are free, and some of them have a small monthly or annual fee to use them. The next section here is users. And this is where you can go to add those additional users to modify your web page. You'll see this website only has one user, um, the administrator here. But you can simply add a new user by clicking the button Add New. And go ahead and type in a username and an email address, give them a password. You can pick their role. So if you want them to be an administrator, which I don't recommend generally, you should probably be the only administrator. You can make them an editor of pages or an author so they can just change certain text things. Um, you could make most people probably an editor would be just fine. And then you can add a new user. Adding users is free and there's a limit of like 100. So you're probably never going to run into that. So I highly recommend you would use that if you want anybody else to help you build a website or maintain it. And the next thing we're going to look at are the general settings. Here we see some simple settings like a tagline and a site title. You might wonder what, what these are for. Well, they do appear up at the top of the browser um, where people view, view the website. They're going to see your site title and also for SEO. So if somebody searches Google for Charlottesville, authentic Afghan cuisine, it'll be matching those search terms with the words you use in the site title and the tagline. So this is an important place to determine what words are going to be, people are going to be searching for when you want them to find your website and build your SEO strategy, starting with these two fields right here, because they're quite important. Other settings on this page, you know, you can just select your time zone, your site language, pretty basic stuff. Um, it's probably going to be pretty set up for you and then just double check it and click save changes. So that's a basic rundown of the dashboard of WordPress. Um, if you're building a website in WordPress, you'll be spending a lot of time looking at these screens. And honestly, it's not the most elegant interface, perhaps. It is a bit outdated looking, but it's functional. And um, within a few hours of using it, you will become pretty familiar with it. So I don't think it's a very big problem or a very big hurdle for using WordPress. So with that, I'll be happy to take your questions. We've probably got 20 or 25 minutes, so I hope that you have some questions. If you don't have any questions, thank you for uh, joining if you have to leave, and I hope you have a good day. Thank you. Okay, Cameron, we do have a question. Can you hear me okay? I lost internet for a moment, but I think oh, we're good. everything's back. Yeah. You good? Okay. Um, so we have a question. How can I edit page code with a command like editor? Yeah, so I'll show you over here um, on my screen. So when we go, depending on the WordPress theme you've installed, you'll have a couple different edit buttons, like I said. Um, if we go to quick edit, and this theme, it won't do it. We'll go to the, go back to the edit screen. 
And generally speaking, there will be an option for code editor. So you might see that here on my screen. So it says control shift alt M <laughs> brings up the code editor. That's probably going to work on your version of WordPress, but I got to that just by going to the page, clicking the three dot 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 in the corner and then code editor. So that, that's the difference between editing visually the WYSIWYG editor and editing the code, which is this. So that should hopefully that answers your question. If not, please let me know. Okay. Um, I haven't registered my business yet, but I want to get this going. Um, thank you for the info. So that's a, a nice positive response there. Um, so is there a limit, limited number of sites you can build using one WordPress account? So a great question. Typically, yes. Um, if we look at the biggest what WordPress hosts like GoDaddy and Google, they're going to charge you about $8 a month to host one WordPress website. Though they do recognize that some businesses might have dozens of websites that I want to host with one account. So they don't make you pay $8 for each. They normally have a bundle plan. And I think the last time I looked, you could get about 10 websites under a plan and it was like $50 a month. So there is a discount. Um, it depends on if what host you're going to use, what kind of plans they have and what discounts they offer. But that's how it works. If you want to host multiple WordPress websites, you'll just have to buy a, a bundle plan. Okay, what about ADA compliance for websites? So ADA, um, Americans Disability Act, it's to make sure that websites are accessible to people with handicaps. So with when it comes to the digital things, uh, mainly it means that the website is written in such a way that uh, a screen reader can read the text on it to someone who's blind. Um, that's one of the main use cases. So let's say people who can't see to see websites, they're going to have some um, plugin on their browser that'll read website text. Generally speaking, WordPress themes you find that are written within the last couple of years, they're one or two years old, they're going to work just fine with these types of screen readers. An older website that may be from four or five years ago, it might not work. So there's always the risk that an older theme might not be compliant with these types of screen readers. But again, I think if you download any WordPress theme from the last year or two, this should not be an issue. Uh, okay, I'd like to know how I can view website analytics. Am I able to view which pages get the most visits? Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the main analytic platform I like to use is analytics.google.com. It's the Google Analytics suite. Um, so here I've logged into just a personal site, but I'll just show you. This is basically what you'll see. You see things like uh, visitors per day. You can definitely see which pages get the most visitors um, right here at the bottom. So yeah, Google Analytics is a very powerful tool for monitoring up to the minute information about your website, who's visited it, where they're from, what kind of device they were on. You can see on my screen some of the information. And these are just the basic levels. There's much deeper information you can get. So. Um, in addition to Google Analytics, the second most popular one, I think, is Facebook Pixel. It's similar. It tracks um, It's Facebook's version of uh, analytic collector and a way to display the information. So if you like Facebook, uh, you can try Facebook Pixel. Or if you like Google, Google, you can try Facebook or Google Analytics. And you can run them both on the same website at the same time if you want to. That's fine. Okay, do you have any recommendations for trainings online on how to use WordPress or how to learn how to use WordPress more effectively? And thanks for the information. Great question. Well, I think you took the first step today just by spending an hour here with us uh, and going through this overview. Of course, I can do some more training with you one-on-one. -on -one. Other than that, there are a lot of good YouTube videos. Um, so I like, I think YouTube video formats are really good. I don't really have a go-to YouTube channel for WordPress trainings. But I would determine what topic you're most interested in and just search for a YouTube training video on that. Something that's come out within the last six months, preferably, because the platform gets updated in such a way that anything older than a year might not be relevant, completely relevant right now. So uh, check out the YouTube training videos. And if you want some more specific one-on-one -on -one advice, then reach out to me.
I would like to add a video on our homepage instead of a photo, but because um, of size, I've heard it needs to be hosted somewhere else. Um, can you explain how to do this? I'm not sure if this is something you can explain quickly. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a great question. So, right, you know, you saw in the WordPress um, media section, I'll jump back there, that there was a size limit, 32 megs. So 32 megs for a image is very big and you'll probably not run into that but 32 megs for a video is a very small video so if you were trying to host the video on your website you're probably not going to be able to which is why you would have to host it on a third-party site so the way you do that is uh, the most common platform is youtube you can upload a private video to youtube which means it's not searchable nobody can find it just browsing youtube the only way they can get to it is through your website uh, so YouTube then hosts the video and they handle all the bandwidth and the transferring of the data. And you don't have to pay for that. It's great. It's completely free. YouTube gives you just a little bit of code, which will go in. And then in the code editor section, as we were just looking at, you will paste that computer code in the right place on the web page. If that sounds a bit too complicated, there are also plugins in WordPress for ins inserting a YouTube video. So that plugin will help you more visually um, drop, drag and drop that video onto your website. Again, using that same code YouTube gives you for free. So that's the way I would recommend embedding your, your video. It's the most common way. It's very robust and seamless and you should have no problems with that. Okay, can you offer a paid membership section on this type of website? So a user has to pay and then log in to see specific sections of the website. Um, and then is there a video webinar course um, with the features on how to use this? Okay, great. Um, I'll answer the second part first. Uh, there's no video course on users um, logins that's offered by the SBDC, but I'm sure there is on YouTube. Um, so the answer is yes, you can definitely do that. When you go and look at themes, you'll want to find a theme that supports a user login. Um, that's going to be important. Um, themes like that are going to let you specify then what pages or what content is only visible when the user is logged in. Um, so that's it's fairly easy. If you want to have certain pages that are just visible to all users once they've logged in, but not users who haven't logged in, that's pretty easy to do. If you want to get more complicated and show like, um, show different users that have logged in different sorts of content, then that might require the, uh, the assistance of a website developer to actually program in some custom code because it gets pretty complicated. So the short answer is you can definitely support that on a WordPress website. It depends on how complicated you need it to be. And if you'd like to talk to me more about that, I give you some more targeted recommendations of how to go about doing that properly. Okay. In the user section, I saw subscriber. Is that for blogging or emailing? Good question. That's for blogging, right? Which is not mostly not used. Um, if you want any kind of email subscription on your website, then WordPress, it, it'll certainly work, but WordPress itself is not an email subscription kind of platform. So I would recommend MailChimp which is, I think it's about the world's largest emailing platform. It's free up to 2000 people in your emailing list. And a nice thing is you can, um, MailChimp will give you a little piece of code to put on your website, like in the footer, where people can subscribe to your mailing list from your website. And it'll go automatically to your MailChimp email list um, and set it all up for you. So that's a nice and easy way to integrate your email marketing with your website is going through MailChimp. There's a few competitors to MailChimp if you wanted to search for those, but overall MailChimp would be my main recommendation. It's pretty easy to use. Okay, I would like to upload a PDF that visitors can download. Um, I don't know how to do this. I haven't been able to upload it to the media page. I don't know if that's mm -hmm. a one-on-one -on -one or... Yeah, so... That's a good question. Um, you'll probably need a plugin that will allow you to host a, a PDF file, essentially. Uh, media is pretty restricted to images and videos, not general file types. Um, so I would look in the plugins library for that. I haven't actually looked at for that specific use case. So I'm just assuming that there's a plugin that'll allow you to host uh, PDF files. Um, there's no technical limitations. You could put any files you want on your web server, but the WordPress uh, dashboard 
is mainly meant for the media, not PDFs. So I do think a plugin will help you there. I have a testimonial page that went down at one point, was rebuilt by a tech person, and is no longer easy to add to. Can I add a new one and start over? I think you can always add a new one. If you have access to the original testimonials, you can probably copy and paste the text pretty easily into a new testimonial section of your website. Um, so that's probably what I would do. There are quite a few good testimonial plugins. And if you're looking to more redesign your complete website, there are themes that have really beautiful testimonial pages or a section of the homepage to host testimonials. So either a theme with that support or a plugin will add a testimonial section to your website. What's your opinion about SiteGround versus AWS? So they're, they're both um, hosting platforms. I mentioned Google and GoDaddy. AWS is Amazon. Uh, SiteGround is another competitor. Um, they're very large. They're mainly, at least AWS is really aimed at corporate um, businesses where they have like millions of users. So they're, I think that support and the level of like, performance they give is really overkill for small business websites. And they're probably quite a bit more expensive. I think AWS is especially. Uh, so if you're looking for a WordPress host, I would recommend that GoDaddy would be your first place to look. That works for 80 or 90 percent of the businesses I meet with. They like it. Google is another option. And there's a third option I'll put out there called Bluehost, which is one of the least expensive um, WordPress hosting platforms out there, but also really good. So. What is the recommended dimensions for the header image? Um, we use Elementor. We did not use a template provided and struggle with how it looks on mobile and tablets. Okay. Yeah, it's a great question about dimensions. Um, I, I'm really, I'm interested in, uh, in images and stuff. So I, I find this stuff fascinating. Uh, the resolution of an image um, nowadays, you're probably to be, to be safe with high resolution iPads and screens, you probably want about, 3,000 by 3,000 pixels. Um, that's a high resolution image. You can, a lot of a lot of websites will use something that's even half of that, 1,500 by 1,500 pixels for a header image. Um, but I think in your case, you want something that's high quality that will not look pixelated. So yeah, 3,000 by 3,000, you shouldn't need to go above that. Um, I, I feel like there's a second part to that question, but maybe I forgot it. Can you remind me if there was... Another part. I already clicked it as answered. <laughs> um, oh, <laughs> so I'm sorry. So, uh, and the person who asked that question, if you could, if there was a second part, if you could just post it back in the questions, we'll get it answered for you. Thank you. Um, okay. So when making changes in the WYS, WYG, it looks like we are editing the site live. Is this so? Yeah, um, the WYSIWYG, right? That acronym um, is pronounced WYSIWYG. Yeah, it is almost live. Um, there is a button to publish the changes. So you can edit a whole bunch of stuff on a page and then it won't be live until you click that button. But as soon as you click that button, it's live within about a second. So then if somebody went to the website just right after you updated it, they would see that new content. Thanks for the WYSIWYG tutorial. I must have been off internet when you said that earlier. <laughs> um, okay, so if we need multiple themes for multiple websites, do we have to pay for multiple themes from Theme Forest? Mm -hmm. Or do we just pay for one-time fee and then use multiple themes? That's and a good question. I would like to add, this is Gwendolyn Cassidy, and she said, thank you, Cameron, you rock. <laughs> Hi, Gwendolyn, thank you. Um, so it depends on what theme. More themes nowadays, especially those that are at a higher price point, they give you a license key when you purchase the theme, which means you can only use that theme once. They actually know you've used it once, you've used the license key when you set it up, they won't let you use it for other websites. However, there's a lot of themes that don't have that level of sophistication, probably because they're made from smaller developer firms or independent developers. They don't really bother with that. In which case, if you don't have the whole license key thing, uh, technically, yes, you can use a theme as many times as you want. They would never know. Um, they might have a policy about how many times you can use the theme, whether or not they give you a license key. It might just be in their kind of policy. So I would read that to check. Um, 
but generally speaking, yeah, if there's a license key provided, it's a one-time license key. If there's no license key, then they have no way to check how many times you've used it. If editing live sites, when do changes show up? Um, or are we editing a draft that needs to be uploaded? So you're editing a live site and the changes show up immediately after you click the update button. Um, there, there is an ability to have drafts of pages, which is something that you would most likely add with a, a plugin to have the ability to have drafts. But I'll jump back over here to the visual editor just to just to go through this again. So if I made a few changes on the site, you'll see there's an update button in the upper right hand corner. As soon as I click that update button, the new changes will be visible as soon as somebody reloads the web page. Um, the changes won't pop up if they have if there's looking at the old version. They have to reload the page. If I don't click update and if I just back out of this page, the changes will not be saved. So hopefully that answered the question. Okay, this um, this is a little bit long. I'm working to provide a site that will um, for subscription to be specialized content. Um, is WordPress the way to go, or would some other site? building um, work cheaper and easier overall. Here's some of the elements I want to address. Free or trial content, paywall for full content, tabs for different pages and sub pages. Mm -hmm. Did that make sense? Um, I think WordPress is probably your best option, actually. And the other ones I mentioned, Squarespace and Wix, are not as sophisticated, and they wouldn't have as many features to be able to build out your subscription pages as you want. Um, that said, I think based on that level of detail you went into, you'll probably want to work with a developer to customize your WordPress uh, website to actually get it to do all those things. Um, again, it's easy enough to find a template that'll offer a user login and give them access to certain pages. But when you start customizing the content on those pages based on what user logged in, that's going to require a developer to work with you and to write some custom code for that. Uh, for our business, we are relying on e-commerce quite a bit. We have found Squarespace's built-in e-commerce to be more intuitive thus far. Would you have any advice as to whether to switch to WordPress with WooCommerce or stick with Squarespace's built-in e-commerce tools? Um, any pros or cons to either site? Yeah, you know, there are pros and cons, um, probably more than I would have time to get into right now, actually. I think Squarespace works really well. If your business is mainly selling your products on your website, um, if you don't need a user login or to manage a subscription, if you um, are okay with the limited kind of analytics and SEO ability that a Squarespace website gives you, um, those are some of the constraints of sticking with Squarespace. Um, WordPress can do all the same things for sure. They can have a very good e-commerce platform with WooCommerce. It's super easy and um, very price competitive. It's going to be about the same uh, price to use that. However, you'll have a ton more flexibility when it comes to modifying your website, improving the SEO, measuring your data with different analytical tools, uh, et cetera. So if you find that um, you're running into limitations with Squarespace, then I think your upgrade path is uh, WordPress with probably using WooCommerce as your e-commerce plugin. Um, I'm a hands-on type of person and will build my website. If I have issues building my website, do you offer services to assist me? I certainly try. Um, you know, I do my best. I have a limited amount of ability to do hands-on work with client websites just due to the number of uh, people I meet with, but I can mostly help at a strategic level. And also, if you need help with actually finding a freelance developer for a couple hours who can do certain changes for you, I have great relationships and, and resources to recommend to you. Uh, for someone you can hire like that. So feel free to reach out to me and I'd be happy to talk with you and learn more about your needs and help you out. Great. Um, is it true that JPEGs are not combat compatible with certain websites or readers like um, phone users, etc.? I don't believe that's true. JPEG is the most widely used internet image format and has been for a long, long time. Um, I think it's the most uh, widely compatible format for sure. So I, I don't think there's any case where a JPEG wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't able to be viewed. Um, the one thing I'll say though, just about images is that if you're looking for a transparent image, 
like a logo and you want the, the logo background to fade into the background of the web page, a JPEG won't have, can't have transparencies. So then you use the PNG file format for transparencies, but most images can be JPEG. And if you need a transparent background, then you should use PNG. Okay, we still have about 20 questions. Um, sure. So I'm going to try to get through these. Um, there are a lot of themes to choose from. Can you say more about how to select it? Uh, do you have suggestions on how to start if we're going to be selling online digital resources for users to download? Um, would e-commerce online types of stories be the best to start with? Is it easy to integrate it? There's a lot of questions here. Um, is it easy to integrate with other themes? So this is all, I think, going around the themes to choose from. I don't know mm -hmm. if you can address that here or not. I think, I, I think it'd be great to talk with you one-on-one -on -one about that. But one thing I'll say briefly is that... Um, you know, yeah, there's a lot of themes. If you search Theme Forest for a certain type of website you're looking for, like a hair salon, you'll find hundreds, if not thousands. And I think it's great because you have a lot of flexibility and selection, though it can be overwhelming. But I would look for the themes that have the highest number of ratings and the most downloads, which is easily visible to so start your search there. But yeah, I think um, we could have a chat about that and probably make the most sense. You can tell me more about what you're trying to achieve and I can even help you look at some themes and we can maybe decide on the best one together. Is there any cost associated with analytics? I'm glad you asked because I was going to uh, mention that when I was showing you the analytics page, it's free. So both Google Analytics and Facebook Pixel, there's no charge to use that. So it's completely free. Um, this is another one about the themes. How hard is it to change a theme? Does it make sense to update one? Um, this person's theme is eight years old. Mm -hmm. I think an eight-year-old theme is going to have some pretty serious problems, I would imagine. Uh, generally speaking, now they won't be very compatible with mobile devices. They won't have very good SEO. There are going to be some things falling apart, so to speak. Um, so how easy is it to change your theme? Well, from an eight-year-old theme to a modern theme, it's probably not going to be easy to change to it. You'll have to essentially rebuild your website using a modern theme. So, you know, you can copy and paste the text, you can bring over the images, but it won't transfer automatically in any sense. So you'll have to plan on spending time to kind of re-envision the website with a new theme and how and how you want it to flow and what information you want on it. And it might be a good opportunity for you to throw out text or images that aren't working very well from the old site and actually you know, re-envision re what messaging you want to put out there on your website. It's a good opportunity. I think every eight years or more, probably every two or three years is a good time to really refresh your online presence and think about how you want to communicate your value proposition going forward. Um, yeah, back on themes, um, is the theme for WordPress used for the entire website or is it a theme per page? Um, I've taken over a website and been trying to edit pages. However, only one or two pages have the Divi builder. Is that right? The other pages are lacking any type of editor that is practical. Well, that's interesting. I mean, almost every theme I've ever seen or worked with, it is the entire website. It is not just a theme for a page. So the experience you have is, is weird. It's not really one I've heard of before that Divi is only an option on certain pages. And for those of you who, might, who don't know, Divi, I mentioned Elementor. Divi is like a com competitor to Elementor. These are editing interfaces that certain developers choose to include with their theme to make it easier for you to edit it. So Divi is popular, Elementor is popular. Um, it sounds to me like probably this website was pieced together from different sources, which is possible, but not ideal. So yeah, it sounds like a bit of a weird situation. It might be something if you want me to, to meet with you and then take a look at it, I might be able to provide more insight into solutions for that, but it's not really something I've ever encountered before. I have created a WordPress page about two years ago. Um, is there someone at the SBDC that can take a look at the site and let me know if it's set up well and give constructive feedback? Yeah, I'm happy to do that. One of the things I do is a website analysis and recommendations where I'll I'll do a deep dive on your entire website and kind of point out all the areas that uh, could be improved upon, uh, maybe where you're missing opportunities to you know achieve your goals um, and just help the website look and act better. So you can email me and then we can chat about that and I'll be happy to do that for you. 
My website was set up using wordpress.com. How, how can I get out of it? Do I need to get another host? Yeah, so I've unfortunately I have talked to business owners with the same situation. They erroneously went with wordpress.com only to run into all its limitations as I described and realize it wasn't going to work for them. So there's no easy way to transfer your stuff from wordpress.com to a wordpress.org website using the theme you select. Um, you, my best recommendation would be to set up a hosting plan on GoDaddy or some other host, um, pick your theme, install the theme, and then copy over content manually page by page until the new website is built um, on the wordpress.org platform. And then at that point, you can just stop paying for wordpress.com or uh, cancel that subscription. We, uh, we currently use the events manager plugin for our events, um, but have struggled with the recent updates to the plugin with the appearance and capabilities. Is there any plugin that you recommend we could transition to? So events management, again, has, I think, a lot of plugins. It's a very common use case, so there's hundreds. I don't have a go-to events planning plugin. Um, it's not something that I've encountered recently, so I don't really have a recommendation like you asked. I would say that the best thing to do would be to search for that in the plugin store and go ahead and look at the top one or two plugins that have the highest reviews and the highest ratings. Probably the, one of those will be your best option, but also you can email the developer. If you're looking, if you needed to do something specific that your current plugin just can't do, you can email the developer and ask them if theirs can do it. Um, so you might want to do some research before you install it and kind of start using it to make sure it's the right one for you. Do you recommend self-hosting on cloud platforms like AWS or just go with GoDaddy and likes? So um, I think the term self-hosting applies to any host you pick. You know, it's no different on AWS or GoDaddy. They're, they're all cloud platforms, essentially. When it comes to hosting websites, they act identically, right? Um, AWS can do things GoDaddy can't, but when you're just talking about hosting a website, it doesn't matter. Um, I think AWS, again, is kind of overkill for small business websites. I mean, they've got massive data centers. They can do massive processing and computational things, but that doesn't matter. So, uh, you know, if you're just serving up a business website, I think that they're too expensive for most businesses. So GoDaddy or Google or Bluehost would be my, my top three recommendations. Okay. Um, what language is WordPress written in? Um, I mean, it's it's written in variety. It'll support a variety of languages, I should say. Um, Java, Python, all the major um, languages that you write computer or website code in, um, it supports. Um, as far as the underpinnings of the platform, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I'm sure it uses some sort of C plus or C sharp, but I'm not a developer by trade. I'm more of a business strategist. So I don't know. I'd have to, you know, look up some developer documentation to actually figure out what coding language WordPress was written in. But for the most people who use it, for business owners, it's not going to matter at all. But uh, just know that if you want to hire a developer who wants to write in PHP or JavaScript, it'll be supported on WordPress. Uh, let's see. Can I use WordPress just to store a database of names? Um, and probably, I think WordPress is mainly used for a front end website, something people visit. And many websites have a database component, but if you just want a database of names, um, it might make more sense just to create like a Google sheet, like an Excel sheet, you know, um, if it's just a database. So it depends. If your website is pulling from the database to display content, then yeah, you'd want to host it on WordPress. But if it's just a database, I think WordPress is not necessary. You can probably just use a Google Sheet for that. Um, do you have a recommendation for who we could use to compress our images? So they change quite often. My recommendation is just to Google free online image compression tool. And there are, there are websites that are, they all do the same thing. You select a JPEG or a PNG. Often you tell the site your um, ideal 
um, size you want it to come out to or the resolution you want it to come out at. And it'll then resize and shrink that image to your specifications and, and let you download the new version, uh, typically within just five or 10 seconds. If you've got hundreds and hundreds of images you want this done, um, you can do, you can try to find a batch conversion tool, which means you can upload like a hundred and it'll run through them all one by one and then give you the outputted files. Uh, you can also do this in Adobe Photoshop or Lightroom if you have access to that software and that'll do this as well, just on your own computer without uploading anything to another website for that conversion. Okay, we're getting through them. Um, what's the difference between preview and update buttons if editing live in WYSIWYG? Yeah, um, so preview will just show you um, the version of the page you've just edited, the way it'll look to a normal website visitor who's not the admin for the website. Whereas the save or publish button, they're used interchangeably. So if you see save or publish, it means the same thing. Um, you click that button, it means you don't have the chance to preview it before everybody else on the in the world would have access to the same update. So yeah, preview can be handy, especially if you have lots of people looking at your website throughout the day and you don't want to publish something to have somebody maybe notice a typo. You can then preview it if you really want to be thorough before you would publish or save those changes for the greater internet to see. Are there any SEO plugins that you recommend? Can you explain how we can SEO our own site? Yeah, um, so SEO, search engine optimization, is kind of the art form of putting text around your website and using the right text in the right places to increase your website's search rankings. So making it show up at the top of the list in Google or in Bing. Um, so that's what SEO is. Um, there are there are very various plugins that'll help you fine tune your SEO. Like I said, WordPress by default offers you a basic level of SEO compatibility just because they constantly update their platform. Um, there's one SEO plugin that I personally find pretty helpful. It's called Yoast, Y-O-A-S-T. And um, Yoast is free for, for many users unless you need advanced features. It'll look at your website and give you recommendations of things to change. And then it's basically up to you to act on those recommendations. Um, so that's a place to start. You know, I think if you, SEO is a long journey. It's kind of a never ending journey because uh, there's always more fine tuning. You can do more data collection and analysis you can do to get your website showing up at the top of the search results. Um, it just depends on your resources and your skill level. So I think Yoast is a fine place to start. Okay, on that note, someone's asking if there are any SEO plugin tools other than Yoast you could recommend. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps they didn't like Yoast. Um, you know, Yoast is the one I had the most, I have the most experience with. I don't really, I haven't really used other ones recently. So that's, I don't have other recommendations personally. Um, but again, if you want to search for in the plugin store for SEO um, and see what else is popular. I know Yoast is very popular. I think it might be the most popular, kind of the top rated uh, plugin for the for SEO. But uh, if you don't like it, then feel free to look at look at number two or three option and see uh, see what they do differently that you know you might be better for your website. When searching themes, can you filter the search? Oh, for sure. Yeah, Theme Forest gives you pretty good filters. You normally search by a keyword, so you'll say. Uh, whatever industry you're in, um, like a bakery or something. And there's a lot of themes made for that. You can then filter by price or filter by when it was last updated. Like I said, I wouldn't pick a theme that's more than two years old. Preferably pick something that was made in the last year, like a 2022 theme. That's just going to ensure that it's very compatible with the latest browsers and mobile operating systems and all of that. Um, so yeah, you should have no trouble filtering in uh, Theme Forest and other websites. I think Colorlib as well has um, pretty good filters. We didn't pick one of the themes offered and created, and they created their own theme. Um, does that affect us adversely from an SEO standpoint? Well, it could. I mean, there's no guarantee the theme you created, it sounds like you created this website from scratch and that's completely fine. Um, there's no guarantee this website you created from scratch would be any better or worse in SEO. Um, you know, 
themes that you will find on Theme Forest from um, you know major theme creators have been downloaded thousands of times and have good reviews. So they, I'd say they've been checked very thoroughly. Your theme maybe hasn't been checked by anybody but yourself. So as far as how good it is in SEO, it's really hard to tell. Um, I'm not a professional developer, a full-time developer, so I don't really have the skills to really analyze that for you. I'm sure there are developers out there who would be happy, though, to look at your theme, um, who know a lot about SEO, and to give you some recommendations or guidance about how to improve it in your theme, if that's a point of concern. Okay, someone's asking, what about name.com? Um, it's not a company I'm very familiar with. I think that they will allow you to buy a website domain name for sure, and maybe they host as well. Uh, there's a lot of hosts out there. There's thousands. Um, so yeah, I don't have experience with name.com recently. I don't know much about them. Okay. Um, let's see. I think. Oh, wait. I think we've gotten through them all. Just do one little scan here. Um, I think we got through them. Well, it's great. So you brought so many questions. I appreciate those. That's awesome. And uh, for everybody who needs a little bit more guidance, my email address will be provided um, in a, in, to you in an email. So feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to uh, meet with you one-on-one. -on -one. And I also would like to thank you all for attending. Uh, you will receive an email with a link to the recording and to the slides. Um, I did just post the poll. If you all could take a moment to answer those questions, that would help us for future um, webinars. If you would like to sign up for upcoming webinars or access recorded webinars, please visit virginiasbdc.org forward slash training. This webinar and other SBDC resources are designed to be used in collaboration with your local SBDC advisors. You can sign up for a free and confidential session by emailing help at virginiasbdc.org or via our website. Thank you all for attending, and we hope to see you at the next session. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Bye-bye.